back to Genesis Junction. I'm Miss Christy, and we are here with lesson number 168. Wowza! That's a lot of learning we've been doing as we have been walking through our Bible with these lessons, and we are going to talk more about what we just sang today the part about where jesus is going to meet his disciples so last week oh before we get to last week let's review our bible truths right each unit we have bible truths they are four questions that we ask to help you just solidify the truth of scripture in our hearts and the first one is, where is the first question? Oh, it's still over here. <laughs> here we go. Who saves us from the punishment of sin? Who does? <laughs> right, Jesus. Yeah, we just sang about Jesus. And then, how did Jesus take the punishment for our sin? How did he? Yes, you're right. He suffered on the cross, right? Is Jesus still dead? Is he? No, he's alive, right? He is alive. He rose on the third day. And that's what we talked about last week. And where is Jesus now? I think that's what we're going to talk about today. Where is Jesus now? Yes, he is in heaven, right? He is sitting the right, my right hand, probably looks a lot to you, at the right hand of the Father. Very good. Now, let's dive in. So, last week, Lesson 167, right? We've been talking about Jesus' last time he came to Jerusalem, right? He came in riding on a donkey. People were yelling, Hosanna. And then within just a few days, they were crucifying him. They were yelling to kill Jesus. And they nailed him to a cross and they buried him in the tomb, right? And then what we talked about last week is that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. An angel told a group of women that Jesus had risen, and then they ran to tell the rest of the disciples the good news. They saw Jesus on the way, do you remember? Did they recognize Jesus? No. Not at first, but then they did. They recognized him and they fell down and worshipped him. So today, we're going to start out by showing you how well you recognize people. Can you recognize people when you see them? Sometimes it takes me a few times, especially like when we come to church and there's been so many new families lately that yeah, it might take a few Sundays and then talking with them and getting to know them before you can recognize them. Like maybe you're at the grocery store and those same people that were at church on Sunday and you're looking at them like, I know them. Like they look familiar, but where was it that I saw them? <laughs> That's what recognize means. They look familiar and you're trying to figure that out. Well, I've got a game here and I hope you can help me figure out who these people are. So I have some pictures and they're all kind of covered up, all right? And one at a time, I am going to 
Okay, see that? You can't see who's under there. Reveal just a part of the picture to you. And when you think you guessed it, what person is underneath there, then raise your hand, kneel back at the camera, and say, oh, 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 Miss Christie, I know, that's a, uh... okay? All right, let's see. So here we are, I'm gonna take off just one piece of tape. Ooh. Hmm. Does that help you out at all? Can you tell what that person is? Well, hmm. There's their feet. Does that help you recognize that person? Oh. Looks like they have something around their waist. Can you tell? How about lastly, if I take this piece? Oh, now that they have food in their hand. Ah, so this is a chef. Who guessed that this is a chef? <laughs> Very good. Now let's try it again. I'm gonna flip it over and we'll see who's on this side. I'm gonna start in the middle and we'll see if you can guess who's hiding under here. Oh, hmm. Looks like they're holding on to a notebook or something. They got a pencil in their hand. This could be lots of people that I know. Let's keep going. Let's pull this off. Oh, hmm. their outfit's the same. Kind of the same color. It's got some pockets. Yeah, does anybody have a guess yet? Well, let's go here and see. Can you tell who this is? Yeah, this is a nurse, right? What gave that away? Maybe the stethoscope hanging around her neck? Yeah, and her blue scrubs. <laughs> okay, that is a nurse. Good job, who got that one? All right, well, let's try this one. Here's another, see if you can recognize this person. Well, I'm gonna start down here. Oh, more blue. Blue feet, black shoes. Let's see what else. Oh, somebody might have a tie. Oh, and it looks like they have a belt with some things on there that might give it away. Anybody have a guess? Well, let's see as I reveal this last part. Oh, it's a police officer. Who guessed that? Yes, probably his hat and his belt that has the guns on it, right? Maybe the badge might give it away. All right, one more. Let's see how we do over here. This time, I'm gonna start at the top. Can you tell? <laughs> you might be able to tell. Let's see if this other part, maybe. Oh yes. Well, her hair is up tight and out of her the way. She's got some very special shoes on. Where are my dancers out there? Who recognizes this ballerina? <laughs> very fancy tutu. So there is the ballerina. Who guessed that? <laughs> Great job. So, in today's lesson, we're going to see some people who had a hard time recognizing Jesus after his resurrection. So let's go back to the resurrection morning. Remember Mary Magdalene? had gone to Jerusalem to tell Peter and John about the empty tomb. But when the rest of the women got to the tomb, an angel told them that Jesus had risen, and they headed to Bethany to tell the other disciples. Meanwhile, Peter and John raced to the tomb, but found only
only the grave cloths or the linens left behind there. Mary was with Peter and John, but after they left, she stayed at the tomb. Weeping, right? What does weeping mean? Yeah, she was crying. Mary looked into the tomb and saw two angels there. They asked her why she was crying. And she replied, they've taken my Lord away. And I don't know where they laid them. Oh, poor Mary. She was so sad. She had missed the good news that the other women had been told from the angel. Okay? So let's read what happens in our Bibles to Mary. We're going to go to the book of John. Okay? So we're going to go to John chapter 20. Okay? John chapter 20. And I'd like you to follow along at home. So grab your Bible. You can push pause if you need to and then hit play when you're ready. We're going to go to John chapter 20 verses 14 through 16. Okay? All right, are you back? All right, let's read. She answered. Well, let's go back. We're going to go back to 13. So we're going to start at verse 13. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? She answered, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. When Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus Standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, Did you take him away, sir? Tell me where you put him, and I will get him. And then Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary turned toward Jesus and said in the Jewish language, Rabbanai, and this means teacher. So Mary didn't even recognize Jesus either. And he was standing right in front of her, just like our pictures. Like the people were standing there, but they had something covering them up. We didn't recognize them until usually the face one got pulled off. But to Mary, it was when he spoke her name and then she knew. So after Mary spoke to the angel, who was standing by her when she turned around? Yeah, Jesus. And Mary did not recognize him. Who did she think he was? Yeah, the gardener. And what did Jesus say that made her recognize him? Yes, her name, Mary, right? You know what your name sounds like. When the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and your best friend in the whole world says your name. And that's what Jesus did. Mary was so happy, okay? Mary was so happy to see Jesus that so she held on to him and didn't want to let go. But Jesus told her to go give the disciples a message, and she obeyed. Mary was overjoyed as she ran to the disciples and exclaimed, I have seen the Lord. 
Jesus was seen by many people after his resurrection. We already learned how he met the other women on the road as they were going to tell the disciples the good news. Then later that day, Jesus walked with two disciples on the road. They didn't recognize him either until later that evening. But then Jesus disappeared. The two men immediately ran to find the others to tell them that they had been with Jesus. So let's read what happened next in the Gospel of Luke. Okay, so let's go to our Bibles to Luke. And actually, we're almost to John because it's the very last chapter of Luke, verse 24. Or chapter 24. And we're going to read verses 36 through 40. So again, grab your Bibles, open them up to Luke chapter 24, and you can hit pause while you're finding it, and let's read it together, okay? So we're going to read verses 36 through 40. While the two followers were telling this, Jesus himself stood among those gathered. He said to them, peace. <laughs> no, he didn't do this. Peace be with you. They were fearful and terrified. They, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus said, why are you troubled? Why do you doubt what you see? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me. You can see that I have a living body. A ghost does not have a body like this. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Okay. Wow. So... Who entered the room and said, peace be with you? Yeah, Jesus. Yes. Jesus appeared in the room with the disciples and he didn't even use the door. What did the disciples think Jesus was? Yeah, ghost. Our Bible said, yours may say spirit. Okay. And what did Jesus show them so they would believe that it was him? Yeah, his hands and his feet. Why would he say, look at my hands and look at my feet? Yes, you're right, because they had what in them? The holes from where he was crucified on the cross and his feet. It was Jesus. Jesus' resurrected body was very different than before. He could appear and he could disappear just like that. But yet he had a real body. The disciples could touch him, they could hear him, they could see the nail marks and his hands and his feet. This was amazing. Jesus showed himself to his disciples so that they would know that he was really resurrected. Let's find out what took place at the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus said he would meet his disciples. While they were waiting for Jesus, Peter and John and five of the others decided eh, they'll go fishing. They fished all night, but caught nothing. Goose egg, not even a goose egg, zero, zilch, nada. <laughs> then in the morning, they heard someone calling for them on the lake shore. But they 
didn't recognize who that man was. The man shouted, hey, did you catch anything? You know, anybody might just yell that. And the disciples answered, no. Then the man said, toss your net on the right side of the boat. You'll find fish on that side. The disciples did what he said. Suddenly, there were so many fish in the net, the men couldn't even pull it in. Did they know who the man was now? It seems something like this has happened before, right? Let's read what happened. Let's go back to the book of John where we just were before Luke. And we're going to go to chapter 21, okay, which is the last chapter of John. So find it in your Bibles. Let's read together from John chapter 21. We're going to read verses 7 through 9. Are you there? Let's read together. The follower, or the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord! When Peter heard him say this, he wrapped his coat around himself because Peter had taken most of his clothes off when you're fishing. You just get down to the bare bones. Then he jumped into the water. The other followers went Two shore in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. They were not very far from shore, only about a hundred yards. When the followers stepped out of the boat and onto the shore, they saw a fire of hot coals. There were fish on the fire, and there was bread. Okay. So... After, okay, after John saw the miracle of so many fish, he recognized Jesus. Peter was so excited to see Jesus that he jumped out of the boat and swam to shore. What did Jesus have waiting for them on the beach? Yeah, a fire with fish and bread. Be delicious. Jesus had breakfast ready on the beach. When the disciples reached the shore with the boat and the fish, Jesus invited them to eat with him. No one asked who he was. They knew it was Jesus. So here are the disciples again, and they didn't recognize Jesus at first until he did a miracle. One like he had done before when they first met him out on the water when they were fishing. But Jesus didn't come to see these disciples just because he wanted to have breakfast. I mean, that's a bonus, right? But the real reason Jesus came is because he had some unfinished work that he needed to take care of with Peter. Now, do you remember a couple lessons ago when we talked about Peter, okay? Do you remember what was happening here? After Jesus had been arrested, and Peter had followed along to kind of keep an eye on things, but kind of just from the shadows. And people kept saying, hey, aren't you one of his disciples? Aren't you one of Jesus' followers? And what did Peter say? Yeah, he said he didn't know him, right? And then you remember what happened? The... my sick crow there right the rooster crowed and Peter had denied 
Jesus, knowing Jesus three times. And then Peter felt what? Yes, a horrible. He wept also and felt so bad he realized what he had done. So, and then he didn't see Jesus after that, right? Jesus was killed and Peter was never able to make it right with him. And then he died and was buried. Peter was feeling probably very guilty, right, for what he had done. Peter had cried in sorrow that night, but now Jesus wanted to let Peter know that he was forgiven. He asked Peter, do you love me? And Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Peter had turned from his Savior three times, remember? He said he didn't know him. So Jesus asked Peter the same question, Peter, do you love me? Three times giving Peter three chances to say that he really loved the Lord. Each time after Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you, Jesus gave Peter a command to take care of his sheep. Now Jesus wasn't talking about that sheep, right? Who did Jesus mean when he said, take care of my sheep? Right, his flock, us, right? All the believers that would come to believe in Jesus. Those are his sheep. We are his sheep because Jesus called himself the good shepherd. Very good. You are all so smart. And the shepherd cares for his sheep, those who believe and trust in Jesus. Jesus was telling Peter that he, Peter, must be the one now to train and to teach and to help and to love other believers. Everything that Jesus was doing before, now he's passing the torch on to Peter. Jesus forgave Peter and gave him a new responsibility to take care of his flock, the church of believers. Okay, so that's what happened in today's lesson. When Mary didn't recognize Jesus at first after the resurrection, and then where even some of the disciples didn't recognize Jesus at first. But then once they talked with him, they knew that he was the Lord. All right, so let's find out what your homework is, okay? So your homework, if you can't join us this Sunday in person, will be in the mailbox outside the kids' wing and for the Adirondack Mountaineers, which is our pre-K, K, first, second graders, okay, they have their take-home sheet and has a coloring sheet and then some things that are matching that need to go in there. And here is another coloring sheet that looks like our poster. And then here's an activity with some fish. We're going to do this in class. How many fish? And then on the back of the take-home sheet is the link to the Justin and Jesse story that if your parents want to read with you during the week, it's a great way to review. The lesson is on, or the story is online and the link is provided and the coloring sheet is there if you want to color it while you're mom or dad or an older brother or sister reads you the story and also the memory verse is there right and this is the memory verse for the adirondack mountaineers first corinthians 15 
verses 57 through 58. And I know it's a long one. It's two verses, right, put together. But some of you have been doing a great job memorizing this. So let's read it together. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Awesome. Okay. Now for the older class, the Durango drivers. The take-home sheets are also out there in the mailbox for you if you can't join us, but I hope to see you in person. And here is the class notes. And here are a couple other verses for you to read. So read the verses as well. Fill in the blanks. There's the coloring sheet of them cooking on the shore, cooking some fish. Who likes to go fishing? Yes. And who likes to cook fish over the fire? Oh, and some butter wrapped in aluminum foil right in the coals. <gasps> mm. I love a good brook chow. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here is the take-home sheet. And here is the memory verse for you, okay? Now you just last week started working on a new memory verse. And yours is this, 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 through 5. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? That's how we have victory. Both verses have to do with the victory that we have over this world because we believe in Jesus. Very good. And both of those, if you like listening to the music that goes with those, will be attached to the email to your parents so you can listen to those songs, okay? And they are great. So, that's it for today from The Junction. And I hope you have a great weekend. I hope to see you Sunday, but if not, have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we will see you real soon. Bye-bye from Genesis.